Hey, it's Andrew here from Home Theatre Engineering. HDMI sucks, or does it? Okay, so you're probably all familiar with the HDMI cable. It's been around for a while now, since about 2003. And so, what's that, 17 odd years? What exactly is HDMI? HDMI is the High Definition Multimedia Interface and the idea of it was that it carried uncompressed video and audio from one product to another. From, you know, a disc player to a TV and so on and so forth. It's become so much more than that. And most people have either a love or hate relationship with an HDMI cable or, or the process. When it works, it's fantastic. When it doesn't, it can really grind your gears. But one of the problems is we tend to shoot the messenger. HDMI being a connection device also enables so much more to go on between a TV or a projector and a processor and your source. And you really need to understand what's going on there. But that's not made easy by a few other factors. So what else goes on in an HDMI cable? Well, apart from carrying bandwidth, and that's changed a lot. The original cables were about 3.96 gigabits per second on, on the first versions of HDMI. And then in the later versions, well, the current version is now 42.6 gigabits per second. And the interesting thing is they're actually kind of dropping some of their philosophy. As I said, originally it was for uncompressed video and audio. For 8K and above now, they're going, well, we're going to have to start compressing some stuff. And so compression's creeping back in. Now, Personally, I'm not a big fan of that. I would rather get 4K right. Let's get 4K with proper DCI P3 and BT2020 with great dynamic range, um, you know, nice knit levels. Let's make that brilliant because, you know, we've talked about this before. Resolution is not everything. Absolutely not. You know, I've been able to baffle and confuse people by showing them a great 1080 picture versus an average 4K picture, for example. Um, so, I'm not a big fan necessarily of rolling out products just to get people to upgrade and and change you know what they do. Um, you know I, I'm not a big fan of 8K TVs uh, for people who only watch DVDs or VHS tapes, and there are still people out there doing that, and they look shocking. Um, so I'm happy to sit with 4K. Uh, I'm really not interested in going any further, but I am likely to eat my hat, and for that, I have my hat ready and I'm willing to chew. But, um, you know, I, I just wish that, uh, you know, we could just get things right. Now, you know, yes, people said this about PAL, NTSC, 720, 1080, and here we are at 4K. But 4K really does deliver, you know, the pixel resolution that we essentially need. Anyway, I'm not gonna dwell on that too long. The thing is, HDMI now carries a whole heap of features, and that's an interesting thing, because some time back, the HDMI group um, actually banned the identification of HDMI by version number. So HDMI 1, 1.1, 1.2, 1.3, 1.4, A and B, 2.0, A and B, 2.1. You're not allowed to identify the cable by that. And the reason you can't is because if you have an HDMI 2.0 cable, um, it doesn't actually have to have all the features of HDMI 2.0. That's confusing. Uh, so you can't call it a 2.0 cable. You have to name the features and then you have to print them on the cable and you have to be able to read and see that or on the packaging. So that's one of the reasons that when you pick up a bunch of cables, you can't work out what's what. You have to understand uh, what is and isn't the capability of that cable. Thanks, HDMI. I would have preferred you just said, if you have a standard of a cable, you have to have all the features. Well, that would be easy. Then you pick up an HDMI 2.0a cable, you know exactly what it does, or you can look it up. Um, so the next problem is that um, if you are sending bandwidth and your cable doesn't support it, then your cable won't work. One of the things you might see is sparkling, picture dropouts, and so on and so forth. 
all you can do is either just keep buying cables until one works and hopefully you've got the right one you know you buy a higher spec cable or in our case luckily we can use these rather expensive HDMI testers and we can test the bandwidth of the cable and make sure that it's really working and we do that on every job for every customer um, to make sure that we're not going to have problems um, we'd rather get to it early and uh, the great thing is if you've got a cable built into the house we can actually measure that and we know straight up whether or not it will support your new system uh, so the thing is HDMI as I said before does so much more than this and there are two things that are transmitted by the uh, HDMI cable that we really need to come to terms with one of them is HDCP high bandwidth digital content protection the other one is EDID Let's talk about HDCP. Intel introduced this some time ago to combat piracy. Now, why did they do that? Well, because a lot of people out there are grabbing their movies for free. Now, there's a lot of numbers bandied around the industry, um, but the ones that seem to sort of be more stable are that it, this year, somewhere between 11 and $12 billion to the movie industry and up to $74 billion to the gaming industry. Now, what that means is that a lot of movies won't get made. A lot of risks won't get taken on less profitable movies uh, because the profits aren't there on the, on the big movies. So the studios have to try and work out how to get their income. Same with the gaming industry and technology for, for games. Uh, and at the end of the day, you know, it's us, the public, who are holding that back. There's no two ways about it. Now, some people say, yes, but they're big corporations and, and they make big profits. We all make profits, right? Even if you're on the dole, you get paid for filling out the forms and doing all the things you have to do to meet those requirements or going to work or selling products or running a shop or even YouTube. Um, so, you know, at the end of the day, uh, you know, that can be a, a problem for us. And, and therefore, Intel produced HDCP. The interesting thing is they profit from it. So they're actually making money off the fact that the studios aren't making money, if that makes any sense at all. There is a royalty paid for every device that has HDCP in it. And that's pretty much every TV, every processor, every disc player, every Apple TV, Intel makes money. The other side of the coin is that their HDCP copy protection was cracked in about 2010, then a about, then again in about 2012 and then again in about 2015 and I believe again recently and so it doesn't really kind of work that well um, those who want it cracked have, have broken it now that doesn't really affect you and me um, uh, because well it's not really a problem other than the fact that if it glitches if there's a problem between a device and and um, its source then you won't get an image and your HDCP will, will block that transmission and that can be the issue with um, some devices and some content but it gets blamed on the HDMI cable nothing to do with the HDMI cable it's just that the two devices talking to other each other are saying no I, that's not valuable content or it's not you know legally recognizable content so HDCP is one thing um, the next thing is EDID um, extended display uh, identification data this is interesting and this is another reason that uh, we blame HDMI for problems uh, what is EDID uh, so EDID is uh, produced by VISA, uh, the Video Electronics Standards Association, and uh, it's been around for a long time, but basically a display says, hello, this is me, I have these kind of abilities, and then it talks to the next item down the chain, and that information is passed on. Now, if that goes wrong, then, then you have a problem with your image as well. Now really, that's actually nothing to do with the HDMI cable, it's just passing the data. But if we don't get pictures, we blame the HDMI cable. The HDMI cable is really just a bunch of copper, or in some places, fibre optic. Uh, but it, it just passes data. So, what sort of information is transmitted in EDIT? <sighs> An awful lot. So, uh, from a display, it is the manufacturer the model, 
the serial number, the day of manufacture, the week of manufacture, the year of manufacture, um, its uh, color format, its bit depth, its resolution, its aspect ratio. So much information is actually sent through by EDID. Now, one of the things that can happen here is that there can be a miscommunication with this EDID data. And we get quite a few people saying, my system doesn't you know, start up properly. So what you need to understand is this. The information runs downhill. So your projector or your source, that's the one delivering the picture to you. That is the one that says, this is what I can do. There's no point sending me anything else. I can't do that. So it specifies exactly what it's capable of. Then that goes to the next product in the line, normally something like an AVR, a processor, um, uh, an all-in-one amplifier, and so on and so forth, a video processor, could be a Lumigen, could be a Mad VR, could be anything, but it takes the information from the display and then, then passes on to the next thing. That then passes on to the next item in the chain, which then goes down to something like your Apple TV, or your disc player, or, or whatever, you know, your Shield, um, NVIDIA Shield, whatever. Now, what happens if you don't turn your system on in sequence? Well, if you turn on your equipment back to front, your equipment have very little way of knowing what signals to pass out. Um, so your display then sees your uh, AVR as effectively the end of the chain, but the AVR hasn't got the information from the TV. So one of the ways that you can reduce problems that are associated with HDMI, but are actually nothing to do with it, uh, to turn your system on in sequence. Turn on your display first, then turn on the next item in the chain, then go down from there, from your display to your final source. Now, for people who are putting automation in, you know, talk to them and ask them that they start up your TV introduce a delay, start up your um, AVR, introduce a delay, start up your disc player or source or Apple TV. Um, now they might kick and scream about this because it's a little more work for them, but once it's done, it's done. And the chances are that your system will start up a whole lot better because your TV can now say, hello, here I am. There's nothing else in the chain. The next processor or item comes online, looks at the TV and the TV it, passes on the information, he goes, oh, I know what you want, passes on the picture, and so on and so forth. Um, that way, everything starts up smoothly. So, does HDMI suck? Well, only if you're trying to send the wrong bandwidth through HDMI. Now, there are a few other issues. One of them has been identified by Jim at Lumigen, and he has found that in certain circumstances that using too short a cable um, can produce issues. Effectively, the signal is too hot um, and the edge of the data, and we're getting into some technical areas here, uh, is not read properly effectively. So one of his recommendations is not to use any HDMI cable shorter than two meters. Now, you might be able to do that and get away with it, but if you are having HDMI problems, uh, try changing out A for a better cable and B for a longer cable. It's nice to have really short cables. We used to do that, but we had problems. And once we switched out, look, it's an absolute pain to have long cables at the back of a rack, but it has mitigated problems for us. So now we just use 2.0 meter cables, um, so six foot cables basically, um, uh, for everything. Uh, and it's not the most convenient, but it has eliminated problems. The next thing is, if you are having issues with your startup, then, as I said, use the sequence that I talked about, and then make sure that you're using the right cable for the bandwidth. Um, using an HDMI 1.4 cable for 4K, HDR, 60 hertz, is not going to work. Um, and then make sure that when you're buying HDMI cables, that the people you talk to truly understand. Ask them about the features of the cable. And if they turn around and say it's an HDMI 2.0 cable, you say, yes, what features are in there? And when they say, well, all of them, of course, well, that's not true. It's all available on the web, of course. Um, and if you do your homework and you have your look up, you know, look up HDMI, look up HDCP, look up EDID, and you'll start to get an idea of what's going on. And there's a massive information there. Good old Wikipedia is full of it. Um, 
But I just wanted to go through this with you and make sure that you've got a really good understanding of, of what HDMI is and, and does and is capable of and some of the, the shortfalls. It would be nice if HDCP would go away. I'd be happy with that. It is kind of useful. Um, so overall, HDMI is a good thing. It's the problems associated with what the information that HDMI carries that's the bad thing and the limitations of the earlier cables in carrying the bandwidth. Once you've got your head around that, you should be fine. And look, you know, one final quick word, you know, I recently built a cinema for a guy, you know, $150,000 cinema, and he just wanted to use downloaded content. You know, I'm, I'm not going to rant about this uh, other than to say, look, if you can afford 150 grand on a home cinema, you can probably afford a 20 or 30 bucks for a movie. And why would you build such a good cinema with such good video reproduction capability and sound reproduction capability when we know that, you know, watching the original content on a disc, for example, or using a kaleidoscope or something like that is so much better than even Apple TV content. Uh, you know, Apple TV is great. Um, but, uh, you know, once you listen to the audio off a disc, wow, there's a difference. Um, and likewise, if you go to content that you didn't pay for, well, you're at the mercy of who, whoever produced that. Um, and the fact of the matter is, you know, if we contribute to our industry, well, you know, yes, they're going to make a profit, but we all do. So maybe we should support the industry a little bit more. Not that Intel will go away, but if people keep, you know, cracking their content protection, then, you know, what good is HDCP anyway? Thanks, folks. I hope this information has been useful to you. Um, obviously, uh, you know, if you have any questions, please drop them in the uh, con uh, comments below. And as always, please like, subscribe and share this video with others. You know, we're really keen to grow this YouTube channel and we hope that the information that we're putting out there is useful to people. And, you know, we could use as much support as, as you can give us um, because, you know, we really do want to do more of these. And, uh, you know, your support enables us to do that. So thank you very much. And uh, we'll talk to you soon. Don't forget, like, subscribe and comment. Bye.